Okay, in this video we want to look at the notion of the characteristic of a ring. So um, before we do that, let's recall a couple of definitions. If A and B are in R and they're, neither of them are zero, but their product is zero, then A and B are called zero divisors of R. So that's the first definition I want to recall. The second is that if we have a commutative ring with one and no zero divisors, then it is called an integral domain. And then finally, the least positive integer, in other words, the least natural number, such that for all r, that when you add r to itself n times, which we can denote by multiplying n by r, you get zero. That's called the characteristic of the ring r. And sometimes we'll write uh, car of r equals n, and we'll just say characteristic of r is n, and it's possible that no such n exists, and in that case, the characteristic will be said to be zero. So let's look at some examples. So kind of familiar things from previous courses generally have characteristic zero. So notice that the characteristic of z is equal to zero, and that's the same thing as the characteristic of Q, uh, the characteristic of R, the complex numbers. It's also the characteristic of like a polynomial ring, Z of X, and so on and so forth. And so, well, why is that true? It's pretty simple. It's because if you keep adding an integer to itself, you'll never end up back at zero. Okay, so next we're going to make the following simple observation, and we'll do a little baby proof of it. So the observation uh, will be that the characteristic of Zn equals n. And um, I'm not going to be like super thorough with this proof. I'll let you fill in the details if you want to. So the first thing to notice is that for all a in Zn, it's pretty clear that um, if you add a to itself n times, you get n a which is equal to zero in Zn. Okay, because you get a multiple of n, but multiples of n are all zero inside of Zn. So now, uh, what that tells us is that uh, the characteristic of Zn is less than or equal to n. Okay, so we know that the characteristic is the, is the smallest number that makes this true. So the characteristic can be at most n. Now the next thing that we want to do is suppose that uh, the characteristic of Zn equals m, but now notice that means that if you take m and recognize that as one added to itself m times, you're supposed to get zero inside of Zn because that's what it means to be the characteristic of a ring. But if we transport this into a modular arithmetic, ty arithmetic type equivalence, that's the same thing as saying m is congruent to 0 mod n, which is the same thing as saying that n divides m, which is the same thing as saying that n is less than or equal to m, which is equal to the characteristic of Zn. So let's see what we have. We have the characteristic of Zn is less than or equal to n, and n is less than or equal to the characteristic of Zn. So putting this all together, we have the characteristic of Zn is equal to n. Okay, good. I'll clean up the board, and then um, we're going to prove uh, some standard results about the characteristic of a ring. Okay, so the first little result we want to prove is this lemma. So let's say R is a ring with one. It's not necessarily commutative. If N is a natural number, in other words, a positive integer, and it is the smallest such that when you add one to itself, N times you get zero, then we would say that the characteristic of this then it follows that the characteristic is equal to n. Remember, this is not the definition of the characteristic. The, character, the definition has to do with this equation being true um, for all r if we add all elements um, from the ring and get zero. Okay, great. So uh, let's see how this goes. So uh, we will notice that um, n 
times r, in other words, r plus r plus r, and so on and so forth, can be factored in this way. So this is r times 1 plus up to r times 1. Okay, but now we can factor an r out of the left-hand side, and we get 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times. But uh, we've determined that uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times is equal to 0. So this is going to be r times 0, which is equal to 0. Okay, so not only is n the least such that when you add 1 to itself, n times you get 0, n is the least so that when you add any element from the ring to itself, n times you get 0. So what that does is that indeed makes the characteristic of r equal to n. Um, okay, great. So now a quick example of a ring with a positive characteristic that is maybe not unidal. In other words, it does not have an identity. Let's look at the following ring. So let's maybe look at 2z6. Something like that. So notice uh, that's going to be all multiples of 2 inside of z6. So in other words, that'll be 0, 2, 4, um, and then that's it. Okay, great. And notice that the characteristic of this will be equal to 3. And so that's pretty easy to check because if you add 2 to itself uh, 2 times, you get 4. But if you add 2 to itself 3 times, uh, you get 6, which is equal to 0. But then if you add 4 to itself 2 times, you get 8, which is the same thing as 2. But then if you add 4 to itself 3 times, you get 12, which is the same thing as 0. And so just quickly by checking all of the elements, we see that 3 is the least number, so that when you add each element to itself 3 times, you get 0. So um, if you have a multiplicative identity in the ring, you can easily check what the characteristic is, but if you don't have a multiplicative identity, like in this case right here, then it might be a little trickier. Okay, I'll clean up the board and we're going to prove one more standard result. Okay, the next standard result we want to prove is the following. So if R is an integral domain, so let's recall that that is a commutative ring with one and no zero divisors, then you only have two possibilities for the characteristic of R. It's either equal to a prime or its characteristic is zero. So we're going to prove this result by using the contrapositive. In other words, we're going to show that if uh, the characteristic of R is equal to N, a composite, um, and the characteristic is not equal to zero, but we, you know, we don't need that, then R is not an integral domain. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and see that. So uh, let's suppose that N equals the characteristic of R with um, n equals a times b, and let's say that um, a and b are both bigger than 1, okay? Then we have um, n times 1, so that's the same thing as 1 times itself n times, which is equal to 0 because that's the characteristic of the ring, but we can also write this as a times, uh, a B times 1, which is the same thing as A times 1 times B times 1. Great. But now, uh, notice that since A and B are bigger than 1, that also means that A is less than N and B is less than N. But since A is less than N and B is less than N, by the previous lemma, that means that A times 1 is not equal to 0 and uh, B times 1 is not equal to 0. So let's see what we found. We found two non-zero elements of the ring, but when we multiply them, we get zero in the ring. In other words, a times one and b times one are zero divisors. 
which is exactly what it takes for R to not be an integral domain. Okay, that's a good place to stop.